Hey folks, Quilly Teen here, and welcome to the next episode of our solo arena run in the Elder Scrolls Legends card game. We're just playing against AI over here. We have killed five opponents. We lost against one of them. We'll have to rematch, and we do have to keep finishing these people before we get to the boss and claim our reward, either from losing three times or from completing the arena. Let's go and see what she's got up her sleeve. Bum, 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 bum. It's an intelligence agility deck. I like how the coins knock together. It's very satisfying. Monarch of Ice. All right. Your opponent comes to battle with defenses ready. Barracks, when you summon a creature here with four or more power, draw a card. Okay, so that's over here. So she starts with something in play. We'll see in a second. Um, I'm going to throw the prophecy card back. I'm going to throw him back, look for something cheaper. I actually might want to keep the Skirmisher's Elixir in my hand. It's a really, really powerful card. I'm going to go first. I'm going to have to wait a while before I can cast it. But holy crap, does it ever make a difference. I'm going to keep it in play. It's really been hugely influential. So, there's, she starts with a 0-4 guard on the, the concealed side. But here, when you summon a creature here with 4 or more power, draw a card. Wow. We're not going to start with Arrow to the Knee, so we'll just end that. If the top card of your deck is an action, draw it. Otherwise, put it at the bottom. Okay. So, that's on summons. I don't think it succeeded. If I hadn't moused over, we'd be able to see the extra up. She's only got three cards in hand. So, yeah. It didn't succeed. Um, if I want to start putting anything down on the board... And I kind of do, but I don't want to put it here because of the trade. I'll put it here. He's actually a pretty good way to start pounding through this wall since it doesn't actually have any attacks. And he doesn't have four more power, so it's less valuable to put him over there. 1-5 with charge. All right. Oh, yeah, I could have arrowed to the knee over here. Or... Okay, I still can. Uh, shark Tooth Necklace here. Kill that. And heal me for four. And arrow to the knee. Excellent. Alright, I'm liking this. Lightning Bolt, liking it a little less. Although it means you can't Lightning Bolt the Lumbering Ogrim. Which I'm going to put down now, which will also draw me a card. So, that's a high priority play. Draws me a card because of the barracks. That's someone else I can drop over here. Not that soon. But next turn I can do something like Reachman Shaman plus Valenwood Huntsman. Or the Skirmisher's Elixir might be a good one on here depending on what he drops. Actually, I mean, I could put it on here, kill the 1-5, even though it's not particularly threatening. When it attacks a guard, it gains plus 3, plus 0, and breakthrough for this turn. Okay. We want to save you for later. Can't cast you. I'm doing one point of damage doesn't help. I reach and Shaman, the sooner you go down, the better. But, I think it makes sense to put the Skirmisher's Elixir on him and blow up some of these things before they can get organized. In particular, I think I'm going to do this. It'll only leave me with two hit points, but he can't. she can't kill that right now. I could just go face and do five extra damage, but I think this is better. Oh, it denies her a draw, too. Someone gives a creature plus two plus one. Ah, uh, that's unfortunate, so you're going to be able to do that. But you drew me a card, which is really good. She actually hasn't played a card that's letting her draw. Um, so I don't see any reason why I wouldn't just put down the Highland Lurcher right now. Not at risk of being insta-killed. Draws me another card. Alternatively, if I do put down the Valen Woods Huntsman, I can just bop that. And then put down the Pillager, which doesn't help. I could put down the Reachman Shaman and start accumulating buffs. No, I like it. And again, like, he's a really good target for the, the Elixir. So, let's just do this. It's okay. Alright, that's actually really annoying. Also makes him immune to the just the one point of damage. But that buff would have gone on him anyway, and actually that would have been more dangerous. This guy with the buff is less useful than this guy with the buff.
So, I could always use this guy to activate that guy, but I don't think there's much point in that. Um, I could use the Valen Woods Huntsman to make it so that the tracker comes in with charge, so we can kill the 4-2. Or hell, I could even kill the 1-5 because of this, but I think that would be a bad use of things. I could do buffs, I could do all kinds of things. Okay, I kind of like... Here's what we're going to do. We're going to do this. Damage him. Come in with the tracker. Finish him off. And then I can put the Reachman Shaman, say, over here. Actually, I should have probably played him here. There's no probably. It's going to be fine, but I should have played you over here. That was a mistake. No reason to use this quite yet, because, yeah, that's going to happen. That's when it attacks and destroys a creature, draw a card. Oh, that also drew a card from the barracks. I think we just buffed the shit out of this guy. Makes him vulnerable to a lot of things, but he doesn't have that many cards in hand. If he had a way to directly kill this guy, he probably would have done it on his turn. But maybe he would prioritize doing this. I'm going to assume he can't. I could move him, but I think I like the idea of just buffing the shit out of him and using our, um, what's it called? Breakthrough to just deal humongous beats over here. I could shadow shift him afterwards as well. So obviously I have to kill the guard creature, but it's still going to lead to 13 damage hitting her in the face. And yeah, if I'm worried about him dying, why don't I shadow shift him? I like it. Because if he survives, I end up winning next turn. I'm, I'm still okay with killing a 2-1. I think that was fine. Um, let's go with the Northlander rather than the Imp. Could put him here, take them both creatures, and I'll kill one return. No, I think this is okay. It's actually quite nice, it doesn't actually give him an extra card. But right now the Monarch of Ice has tons of cards over here. Um, I'm sorry, does it shackle all creatures in the lane? Well, that's less than great. That's... Huh. Damn it, that's really annoying, actually. So, we've got a charger. I can still buff you with this. So, I mean, so we can have a 4-3 charge. Doesn't really do much for us. Um, although it would knock off another rune, which would mean this guy would come in a little bit more powerful. I mean, even without the, the charge, or the, um, the, the skirmisher's elixir, that would still be the case. So I could go bop her for a little bit, break a rune, yeah, she'd draw a card, but then this guy would come in with plus four, plus four, which would not trigger this. I could also start with a shadow shift and draw a card, which is very tempting. Like, perhaps I shadow shift this guy over. He doesn't have lethal or anything crazy like that, right? No. If I shadow shift this guy over here to start off with, I've got lots of mana. That will mean the 2-2 two -two dies, but 2-2 two -two is going to die regardless. Okay, that doesn't really change any of the math. Um... could give you one of those, which means the only way that you could kill him without losing someone is to attack that way. That would lead to her drawing a card, but isn't a huge problem. But I think I'd rather the breakthrough be on the big fat dude. So let's do that. Drop more fat over here. And then more cheap damage over here. And go. Actually, the Fire Imp might not have been a bad idea. Oh my god, with the shackles! 
And then Shackle the 6-7. Shackle the 6-7. Who you're still going to attack anyway, so that was actually really dumb. Mr. AI, Madam AI. And guard over here. So even with the imp... Actually, no, if I had put out the imp, well, as, long, as well as the 4-1 here, then we would have lethal with this, but I don't think I could have done it all. I'm not sure. Hmm. Well, I guess we double attack this thing. This guy will at least become a 4-3. And then drop everything. And here I think we just go for face. Because there's a good chance this guy will be shackled again. Again, I could do breakthroughs and things, but... I don't think there is any point. I think we just save it for the next round. To help ensure lethal. So I'm going to put the Bannerman here, actually. I should have done that sooner now that I think about it. Because it will draw me a card. Um, which I think would have led to lethal. Yeah, if I had drawn, put him down first and drawn the card, I think I would have had lethal already. Into the fray. Still, I don't think I'm going to lose. <laughs> But I don't know what kind of crazy crap you can put out. That was a lot of shit going on. Drew our card. 6-6 six, six with guard. Last gasp deals 6 damage to all enemy creatures in his lane. What? I'm like, oh, it's fine. I can just kill it with the Viper. But then it's just going to blow up everything in the lane. Turns out it doesn't matter because I can just do that. But still, holy shit. Now that's uh, an 8 casting cost. Dude, that's fantastic. Legendary rarity, not unique though, although you don't really want to put that many casting cost dudes in your deck anyway. But holy shit, 6-6 six, six for 8 with guard, and when he dies, he blows up all enemy stuff. Because 6 damage is huge. Hey, I leveled up. I should get a level up reward. There you go. Oh, one of my cards is upgrading. The Riyadh Nomad, who's a 2-2 two, two for 2 and therefore crap, and I would have never put him in the deck unless there was a special red guard combo, becomes... Oh, another one of these battle mages. 3-3 three, three for 3 and has the plus, th oh, plus 3 and guard while equipped with an item. Actually, I probably didn't own this. I only have it in my arena deck. Or, the Horseman has plus 3, plus 0 oh, and breakthrough while equipped with an item. Um, I think I'm going to go for the more defensive one. Because he's more survivable. Although, being cheaper makes it a lot easier to deploy the combo. But he doesn't have charge or anything like that. Yeah, I want this version. Again, I can always craft the other ones. They're just it's going from a common to a to a common. So they're still, regardless, they're going to be cheap to produce. So that's okay. So that's one I own. That's not added to my arena deck. This is the card I'm adding to my arena deck. Ooh, now that's very interesting. Okay, first of all, I actually do have a handful of go goblins. 4-4 four, for four, 4 is fine. And I do have other goblins. I've got, um, actually, how many of them are actually goblins? The Murkwater Witch, I only got the one. Okay, I may only have one other goblin then. Oh, no. Murkwater Butcher, so two goblins. Relatively cheap. Decent chance of being in play. Uh, it's not terrible. Um, that only deals damage to me. Although, honestly, that's a pretty damn good combo, or um, counter to the freaking Catapult. They probably won't li live for very long. This is very interesting, though. Can attack an additional time each turn, and with Pilfer, every time I hit my opponent, or damage the opponent, which means with a Breakthrough, it actually works out really good as a pair. If I throw Breakthrough on her, she becomes a 4-2, attacks twice, and each time she attacks and hits and damages the opponent, she gets plus one, plus one. That includes if my Breakthrough splashes through, presumably. I think that's probably a better addition, even though it does require a certain combo on board. We'll see. All right. One. Let's find out. Graysteel, the victorious. Let's see what you've got there, Graysteel. You have 35 hit points. This foe is especially hardy. Mm-hmm. 
Other than that, nothing special on the board. We're going to send you back right away. You're actually a really good early creature, and you're a fantastic creature, because you'll cost one. I go first, which is the perfect time to start with the Murkwater Butcher in hand. And actually, one, two, three. Good set of plays. Sucks that you are tougher. We're going to put you on the non-stealthy side. And go. 2-2 two, two with a ward, so that's a bubble which is not entirely pleasant. If I had a coin right now, I would use this to pop the bubble, but I don't. I put you on the other side, and I think we just go for face. Since trading would be kind of sucky, although if you've got buffs that you're going to throw on this thing, it'll be sucky, but alright, there you go. Pilfer draws a card. We do need to shut that down. But I can't right now. Most likely he's going to go face. He probably won't kill my 4-1. So I'm going to put down the Fearless Northlander over here so that I can kill there. Because I can't right now because of the concealment. So I'll just go for face. It does not give him a card. Destroy an enemy creature or support card. Alright, that's a bit annoying. I think I have to trade my 4-1 in here, though. I'm actually... Okay. I wonder how many more of those he's got. It is epic quality, because this would also destroy my Elixir of uh, Breakthrough, which means when I do play the Elixir, I'm going to use it a lot more aggressively this time than before. This would have Guard over here. I think that's what we want to do. To stop the Pilfer, I may as well put down the Mud Crab over here, because, again, it'll be protected, although I could have traded over here, but I think we're just going to do that. That was giving him a card draw, which is always unpleasant. The Mud Crab can kill that, which would be helpful. All right, shackling that makes not much sense, but okay. Ooh. You're probably going to guard yourself. Indeed. That's unfortunate, because I was going to put the Shark Tooth Necklace on my Greystone Ravager. Go for face. Now I'm... Mmm. 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 Okay, I can Veil of Wood Hunter, this, kill it with the crab, and then still put the necklace here, go for face, healing five, which is pretty good. I could also put the orc here and get rid of this fucker. I could put the orc down here, give him the necklace, or ping. Well, I deal with the necklace so he would survive, so I'd have a 3-1 left over, but I don't think that's particularly good. Um, the Riyadh Battle Mage and the necklace, hold on. Am I missing the obvious here? I think I am. Trade, trade, Riyadh Battle Mage with the necklace over here. Yeah. And we got a guard in both lanes. That's okay, I'd still heal. I'm still going to heal. Note, I didn't heal for when he attacked me on my turn. Skirmisher's Elixir. Hmm. That's tough. I'll float two mana. I wouldn't float two mana if I did this, but the plus, the one damage and the charge is a good way to clear crap on the board. I think, actually, Skirmisher's Elixir. Put it on here to maximize my heal right away and to help me burn through the wall a little bit faster is going to be perfectly fine. Back to 30 hit points. Alright, so he gains two hit points. He's got a lot of prophecy cards, actually. Sorry, did you just... Oh, that's just for a turn. Yeah, that's fine. That's actually not bad. 4-3 with that ability as a bonus? And profit? That actually strikes me as pretty good. This is my Pilfer Khajiit. So I think I'm going to put it be behind my fattest possible creature over here. Yeah. So, we're going to do this. Luckily, we'll also break through. Drop you here. 
clear this out. Keep really good control over here. Because this can buff, like... So it's going to do 5 damage next turn. Um, more, actually, because I'm going to use the Elixir. Actually, so I'm in that situation where I'm worried about... Well, you know what? If he's going to use that card, he'll probably use it to blow up a creature. So it's probably safe. I could put the Breakthrough on here, but it seems kind of silly. Because I really want the Breakthrough on there. He might disenchant it, but I think he's more likely to use those spells to kill some of my stuff. That's okay. Oh, that's neat. After loses ward, double his power. Okay, who cares? Alright. I could use the fireball to pop the ward. And do a bunch of stuff that doesn't matter. Oh, I can pop the ward with the Huntsman and put him over here where he'll also be stealthed. Which will actually set us up for a good fireball next time to clear this. Or do different things. Because what I'm thinking is, I bop you. Drop the elixir here. Hit you for eight. Well, actually nine. Hunter to pop that. And then just trade here with the orc. Save the fireball. So, I'm going to do the rest. Uh, that's an interesting question. So, I'm obviously going to trigger a prophecy. Actually, two prophecies. Do I want to save the hunter? I think I do. We want to see what the hunt, what the prophecy is going to do before we commit all of our mana. So, that's the first pro card. It's not a prophecy. Second card. Also not a prophecy. Now, we've got a 6-4 over here. We're still devented by a guard. Uh, I still not going to bother fireballing, although I could kill that. Actually, hold on. Yeah, why don't I do two? Oh, yeah, because it's not actually going to finish this off. I'm not sure. Not sure. So I can do this. And then I'm still going to trade here to make sure that you can't buff it and then go through the wall and do crazy annoying things. I'm at 42 hit points. Detain. We still have lethal. Uh, the guard... Oh, no, we have breakthrough over here. And double attack. Give all friendly guards plus one, plus two. Ah, I see what you're doing. We're still okay. Hell. I can just give you another plus... Move a creature. That's another way of doing it. Um, but if I just attack and then attack... Well, the first attack is going to cause you to drop a card. Which could be prophecy. I guess it doesn't really make a difference one way or the other. And I can always shadow strike you over here for the kill. Okay, so let's do this. And see what happens. It's not a prophecy card. Okay, so we just finished the game. But I was trying to go for, like, let's make sure I can't possibly lose. May have overthought it, but you never know. Draw card. It happens to be a prophecy. It, you know, shackles or blows something up or does something weird. I think we want another snake tooth necklace because we've got two of those battle mages. We want a lot of items, and it's good in general. Swift Strike is only for one turn, so that's stupid. Curse is stupid. Snake Tooth Necklace, it is. Awesome. I think we're in a much better position to take her out. And then the boss fight. So we are going to put a cut in here next episode. Round two against this person and her Catapult of Doom. And then presumably we win. I mean, we've got two tries to beat her, which is going to be good. And then we go off to the boss. Unless, like, if you lose the same person twice, it kicks you out or something. That would be annoying. But it's, I'm assuming... We keep going until we get three proper losses. So we've got two chances to beat her, or we beat her and then we've got two chances of the boss. Cool. Thanks for watching, folks. See you next time.